John Smith versus Getan Sid's true unrestrained power. Emerson Shadow Season 2 cut content from Annie News as usual. Let's see what he has to say. It's very rare that Eminence and Shadow make as big of a change as they did with the <sighs> Getan fight. Oh. It was definitely still satisfying to see him get his face punched in, but when compared to the intense action we were supposed to get, I can't help but wish that we got a little bit of instead. I mean, not only did Sid fight with his wires, thus staying true to his whole John Smith persona, but there was also this entire second phase of the boss fight leading into the climactic beatdown. Wait, so second if phase? You're curious as to Sid's true power Wait, while what? donning the identity of John Smith, this fight with Getin is probably the closest. This is the manga? Holy shit, it's like a fighting game right now. It's like an infinite combo. We'll ever get to seeing it. Trust me when I say you're gonna wanna see more than just the one sided beatdown we got in the anime. Let's get started. Okay. Episode 27, Something Precious, covering only the epilogue from Volume 3 of the Light Novel. Starting things off in Shadow Garden, it oh, turns out Alpha. that the Seven Shadows decided to keep John Smith's identity oh, to Alpha themselves. Knew. Had they gone and told the rest of the numbers, then the strike to their morale likely would have been unrecoverable. It was a burden Gamma and Alpha felt that they needed to shoulder by themselves. So, it was as they dealt with that that they would- This is so awkward, dude. They're just like both crying on the ground and Nui walks in. It's like, um, boss, are you guys okay? With that, that they would also have to confront their imminent run Stonks. into bankruptcy. I love this picture, dude. I, Cause like, this picture, it's, it's, it's like um, stocks, graphs and stuff like that. But the dialogue at that point was talking about how it's basically the most like simplest way of saying stonks went up. Stonk go down. So <laughs> their Goes up. Oh no, it's going down now. You see, despite having raised funds from across the globe, no amount of money was even close to the amount of credit they generated. Mm. There just wasn't enough time to create that much capital. Niu would then come in with her report on Getin, and soon after, Beta would too with her newly decrypted message. Ada. Both of which would serve as the key we. to make everything make sense again, and all of which was identical to the novels. Sid was made out to seem like a mastermind again, and the way things conveniently worked out was probably the most blatant instance. But this time, it's not like the misunderstanding of the letter, because the letter actually had, in different many languages, his true intentions, and Ada was able to decipher it, right? So it's not like a complete misunderstanding here. This is like them realizing, oh, you know, Shadow's actually just fucking around. Okay, he's still here with us. Of dumb luck yet. It was yet another one of Sid's certified Eins moments. That over-the-top parody of things falling into place that just makes this series so entertaining. A funny part they had left out after this was the small mental breakdown Sid had when he noticed the gold was gone. In what was probably less than a minute, Sid had gone through pretty much every stage of the grieving process. Oh. He was first in shock, then disbelief, then- In the anime reaction, I misunderstood this scene, and I thought that Sid or John Smith was like, um role-playing to Yukimi's assistants and have like a maniacal laugh to say, oh, where did the money go and stuff like that. But no, no, it was stolen by Alpha and Gamma already based off the note that they got. Before he knew it, he couldn't even support himself. His legs had given out and his hands were trembling. A cold sweat had started to break out across his forehead, then all he could do to calm himself was deny that any of it was happening. He repeatedly told himself that everything was going to be fine, but the more he stared at the empty vault in front of him, Evil the more he knew that it wasn't. Of these two girls, they're both very cute, actually. I hope they're, like, reoccurring characters in Yukimi's squad. It had made him realize that what he needed now was action. So, after wrapping things up with a nervous giggle, Sid would be confronted by Natsu and Kana, then the rest was pretty much like how- Natsu and Kana! They actually have names, I didn't know, okay. The anime. Since not much else needs to be added, we can now skip ahead to Getin's confrontation with Yukime. Yukime body Getin. And then Getin takes some pills and, and Getin just bodies Yukime. A scene that should have shown us Yukime's awakened golden spirit box. I still don't know how she fights! Yukime straight up! You know what she does? She fucking, she's always like covering her face with her fan. There's like a jingle of the bell and then suddenly cuts just happen. I have no idea what happens. It says jingle, then the blood just flies everywhere. I'm like, how the fuck does she fight? I still don't know. If you were wondering what these glowing lights were in the anime, yeah, it what wasn't is it? just the attack that Yukime had used to defeat Getin, but it was also the true form of those blessed Nine tails. Power like how she is. We did get to see the dense nature of its magical energy, but what we didn't see was the way her body transformed because of it. Wait, what? You see, as the final form of the nine-tailed spirit fox, what is it? not only did her tails grow larger and longer, but her eyes also changed from watery blue to bloody red. What the it fuck? It for this ferocious yet- Why did we miss that? That's like, so, that's such good content for you, Kimi, that you just like, that, 
Why would they skip out on that? Why did the anime skip out on that? I feel like that's such valuable Yukimi stuff that you shouldn't. Elegant look that, when compared with Geten, really made their disparity in power that much more apparent. Yukime would then press her fan right to his throat, but could do no more than that out of respect. So the fl the fan is a blade, pretty much. Okay, because I thought the fan was just for decoration. The man that Geten used to be. The precious memories of the times they shared together, combined with the fact that he saved her all those years ago, were the only things preventing her from truly getting revenge here. This may have been her giving mercy or some sort of kindness, but to someone who was as proud as Geten, all this was nothing more than pity. To him, this was her looking down on him, an act that only went to make him even more angry. Geten would then pop the pill just like how we saw- And then immediately bought his Yukimi. The po I guess it really goes to show like the power of these pills to like these like- Yukimi isn't average, but compared to Shadow, she's average, right? On the anime, and it's from this point on- Immediate slash! <laughs> it's, it's just over. Yet. It's just over. Like, In what? Fact, out of all the minor changes the anime has made so far, this was probably the biggest by a landslide. So, rather than a simple slash cutting Yukime on her back, mm. she was instead straight up impaled without so much of a oh! chance to even react to it. Her consciousness would slowly start to fade, and more well missed that opportunities. Turn to black, that a familiar silhouette could be seen approaching from the shadows. John Smith. The figure approached with no more than a subtle walk, but where my money at? Danced around him as his wires sliced through the air. Where my money at? This person was here on business. Business he would waste no time getting into, as the first statement he would make would declare his intent. Where is it? Sid would then reveal himself with the same constant stride as before, and it was after that him and his target would face off with a little bit of back and forth banter. He didn't. <laughs> so it's John Smith. <laughs> you claim that I stole from you, but you took from me first. I'm only here to take back what you stole, nothing more. What I took? <laughs> Good this luck with that. It. It's all buried underneath. Immediately like how we saw in the anime, but in. Ooh. I won't need luck. That's cold. Instead, built on the tense atmosphere with several demands and insults. It was this long, drawn-out standoff in which both parties would stare intensely with the utmost hatred for each other. It was when all that talking and glaring- <laughs> Utmost hatred? Because, like, Sid, she just wants the money. He doesn't even give a fuck about the- He just wants the money back! It was done, that, that's when the two would finally engage in the most anime way possible. Shouting each other's names like how they did back in the old school Naruto days. Oh, what? Geten would, of course, be the first to strike, but right before his blade could reach Sid's neck, it would be stopped midair by some mysterious force not yet perceived by him. It didn't take long for Geten to figure out what it was, though, because the instant he felt his blade come to a halt, he had unleashed a wave of magic to sense all the space around him. It was this kind of do sixth that? sense that would reveal the numerous wires. That well, it's John because he's blind, him. right? And yeah, get down straight up things that John Smith was smashing Yukimi. Like, there's totally different. Like, the perspectives here is totally different. I mean, John, like, get down straight up things that this man ruined his life. He's after his fucking like ex girlfriend or whatnot, and he's just fucking everything up. And and John Smith is here because he just wants the fucking money back. Like, like, like they're not even like playing the same game right now. It turns out that when Geten had lost his ability to see, what he gained in return was some magic-like sonar that revealed everything around him. So it's like blind swordsman in anime style, right? It's like they can't see, but actually because they can't see, they can actually see even better. So it didn't matter how small and thin John Smith's wires were, because each and every one were clear as day when sensed by his magic. That being the case, the subsequent action was a series of attacks and dodges that made the whole thing seem like a stalemate. Geten was able to navigate the wires and bring himself closer, but every time he did, Sid would just dodge and counter with a barrage of wires. That counter would never land, though, as Geten would always see them coming before they could even reach him. He's actually pretty confident. It was this constant back and forth in which neither seemed. Okay, now where the fuck are the wires coming from, both? I, like I said, if there are no hard, like if it's not like indoors, if there's no surfaces to stick the fucking wires on, they can't act like that. I, I guess it's like. Swinging the wires around like he was doing on top of the train. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. To be winning. All the while, Yukime would be watching in tears as the person she'd always seen. <laughs> She's dying, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's trees around. She's dying, by the way. She got impaled through the heart, by the way. So composed was now fighting on her behalf more enraged than ever. Your behalf? <laughs> Your behalf. <laughs> Bitch, no, we just want the money. We don't care. We just want the money and we're out. To her, he wasn't the type to bleed out emotion, yet here he was in a fight for something precious. Clearly Dude, oh my god, that was so ruthless when he just fucking- Get time was trying to take more pills, and fucking- He just like curb stomped his 
face. Like, you want those people to take my fucking foot? Sina fight for something precious, clearly giving us all while absolutely furious. Mm. If not for the call for you, Kimei, yep. beforehand, you wouldn't be at fault for thinking John was fighting for her. It, I it mean, really just if you if if you gave somebody like uh someone that doesn't watch Eminence in Shadow and just made them watch this episode without any context, you would think that it's like a masked man settling some kind of lover's affair between Gethan and Yukime and win like, winning like, Yukime over. That's straight up what it would look like. But like, if you understand the context, it's like, no. He just wants the fucking money. It goes to make the whole situation that much more funny. Or sad, depending on whose perspective you're watching from. Now, this entire time, Sid was looking like he was getting pushed back. But to anyone who knows really? how it is he fights, it was... Conversation. He's testing. He wants to see what Gethan is made of so that he can truly... You know, he can savor the fight. It's glaringly obvious that everything was in his favor. Sure, Getin was the one who was clearly on the offensive, but with zero attacks having made contact so far, it didn't really matter whether he was attacking or not. For Sid, who was always dodging though, somehow he'd managed to get in numerous strikes on his end. You wouldn't have noticed due to how small they were, but after a little while, countless tiny cuts could be seen starting to stack up on Getin. It's certainly true that he was evading the wires no problem, but I guess seeing all of them still wasn't enough to dodge them completely. In fact, if anything, the only thing it was doing was preventing him from falling into a trap. As it is with the way Sid likes to set up these wires, it's best to consider them like a spider. So I guess they're on trees, huh? Okay, they're just they're just on little tree branches here. Okay, that that's what they're just, these are pinned on. Okay, whenever there's like wires in play, I always think about the environment around because like does this make sense? Where the fuck are the wires sticking onto? Their web. The moment you step one foot into their net, escaping becomes impossible. Not many are able to perceive just how masterful such a trap is laid, but to get in who could sense every inch of it, even he was forced to admire its perfection. The way it was set was- Getan is feeling every inch of John Smith right now, you're right. Perfectly designed to predict, trap, and capture. The numerous cuts on his body were a testament to that. It was every time he tried to get even somewhat close that the cuts he'd receive in exchange would serve as a reminder that any closer was death. So, with the only option left being to swing his sword to no avail, Getin would become trapped just like all the other opponents to face John Smith. He didn't even realize how it had happened, but at some point, Wires had managed to cut off all his escape routes, bringing us now to the first phase of his interrogation. We're not quite at the part where Sid's punching his face in, so what my he does money instead at? is slice his body every time he doesn't answer. What? With each projection to one of his questions, another oh. wire would move and leave Getin bloodied. Oh, yo, we should have seen this torture scene in the anime too. Nah, we got the Yukimi transformation scene we didn't see. Yukimi getting fucking cut, you know, they fucking impaled. We didn't get to see the slices here. Yo, that would have been actually so good to see. Oh, that's, that's kind of fucked up though. Oh, just like individual slices every time. It's kind of like that one episode from, uh, you guys still remember that one anime we watched together? Reign of the Seven Spellblades. Remember that episode seven? Remember the huge plot twist with the sensei? You know how uh, he kept, you know, like doing little cuts every time, you know, he, he was saying no or something? So that's when he would go and pull out the rest of his pills, but rather than get laid out before he could even swallow them, <laughs> no he was actually yeah, able no to ingest them and turn into something stronger bringing us to that second phase of this boss fight that I talked about earlier. With Getin now this contorted Wait, what? werewolf thing, his strength and speed would be beyond anything we've he ever seen He turned into before. an actual beast! In fact, unlike any opponent that John Smith has faced- to Look at John Smith doing the signature chuny pose, look at that. But what, Getin has a face too? I wanna see this! Date, this one was actually strong enough to slice through all his wires. It didn't matter the amount of magical energy that was infused into them, because Getin's newly acquired strength meant they all might as well have been paper. He was cleaving through them like they weren't even there anymore. Now, I can't really say that Sid was entirely shocked by this, but he did say oh as if to show that he was at Impressed? the least intrigued okay. by it. Eventually, Sid would be left with no wires at all, but this was merely- I mean, I guess that's kind of huge, right? If, if, if Getten is actually cutting through these, like, magically reinforced wires, so this is, like, Sid's magic, that's kind of insane, right? you will lead up to one of the cold- And yeah, I, I mean, James, you're right. Like, <laughs> does it make sense for the studio to, like, invest that much into this one episode? That's a lot of shit you have to animate. Like, someone also mentioned, like, Yukimi's Tales animation. That's a fucking pain in the ass, right? All these different strings, that's a pain in the ass. And you, like, the, 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 all of these different things, they are cool. I would have loved to see it, but budgeting perspective, yeah, it does make sense why we got robbed. I mean, 
even as an anime only, I still enjoyed it. This is the thing. Every time I watch Annie's, Annie's content, and this isn't a complaint, it's more of ignorance is bliss. I'm just reminded that ignorance is bliss because when I watch the anime as an anime only, I'm like perfectly content saying, ho, 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 look at John Smith punch get time. Wow, cool. And then when I read this shit, I watch this shit, I'm like, what? There's so much potential. There's so much potential lost here. Why did they do it like this? Oh no, I'm never watching this anime again, bro. This is why so many manga readers, light novel readers, I noticed that they're just perpetually, perpetually like in pain. They're just always suffering. Nothing will ever be as good as the source material, so they'll never enjoy the anime. While the anime only is just like me, are just dumb as fucking ignorant, but they're happy all the time. Oldest lines Sid has delivered so far. You see, rather than use his sword or switch to another weapon, Sid simply stated how the wires were nothing more than steel, then proceeded Beat to deliver Barehanded. the hand-to-hand -hand beatdown that we saw in the anime. What makes this so particularly- Which is even kind of, I don't know if this is a callback, maybe not. But this also happened in episode 5, season 1 against Zenon Griffey. When Zenon Griffey decided that he was going to take all these pills and transform into the awakened state, you know what Shadow did? He just dropped his sword. He got pissed off. He started fucking slapping him around before the anatomic. Notice that he just, he just bodies him casually hand to hand. The savage is that the way Sid spoke was completely uninterested and it was all while doing a step back dodge into an elbow counter. Getten had thought John Smith would be useless without his wires, but what he found instead was that he had simply made his opponent even more dangerous. He had unleashed the martial perfection There it is. Oda, 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 oda. Now, there was nothing special about his fists, elbows, or knees, but the way he used them made it seem like they were the most specialized weapons in the world. Do you think even this pose right now, like this martial arts pose, you see this? This stance? Now, I know that like Sid actually has like He's such a nerd that he's trained all of these different martial arts to perfection, but it'd be funnier to me if he was just making up this fake ass pose, like it does nothing. It's just purely aesthetics, you know, just to look cool. That, that would be, that would also be on brand for Sid. For the most specialized weapons in the world. They had revealed a crucial truth that not many people seem to realize about combat. When all is said and done, a man's body is his final most reliable weapon. Okay. It's the only thing anyone can count on 100% of the time. Okay. So, with John Smith exemplifying this ideal with the fury of attacks, there was nothing Getin could do to escape from it. With every step he took backwards, Sid would be three steps ahead, keeping him trapped in this close range beatdown. It was a one sided slaughter that could only be. Yes, I did notice that he did turn into a werewolf instead of a bulky monster. Is there a reason? Well, it's to enhance. I mean, he's a beast man. It makes sense, right? Zenon Griffey's not a beast man, so he just turns into a monster. Unless there's a deeper meaning to the pills. Described as dispassionate and mechanical. If not for Getin's enhanced regeneration, then it was likely he would have been dead 10 times over by now. So, with each hit shattering a bone, bursting an organ, or cracking a fang, it honestly would have been better if he didn't regenerate at all. It's because he was, though, that this continuous onslaught was much more akin to a never-ending torture. It was a self-made hell in which he initially thought all he had to do was endure. All he had was the hope that John Smith would eventually get tired. <laughs> it's when he saw that he wasn't... Imagine? The fight is so lopsided. Your only hope is that the enemy gets tired. Like, please, if I just withstand this, I hope he gets tired enough to stop. That's the difference of power right now. To stop, though, that, that's when he realized, well, he was screwed. Especially when Sid started hitting both harder and faster. He do, you, do, you, do you guys see what Annie News did here? Look at this. Look at the subtle difference, okay? Look what he says here. That's when he realized, well, he was screwed. Okay. And especially when Sid started hitting both harder and faster. Harder and faster and notice the manga. Look look at the look at the look at the little slight editing he did. Look at the panels. He neither slowed nor got weaker, but instead like, became ever more You see that he's like moving around to make it look like it's going faster and harder. Or relentless until regeneration wasn't even possible anymore. So with his regeneration gone and strength fully sapped. The only thing Getin could do now was lay still and receive all the punches we saw. Mm. He would then curse his weakness like how he did so many times before, and the rest is pretty much- Oh, okay, this part was actually sad. Oh, this is the same feeling I had when Ryu got fucking beat up and you saw his like, face like that. It's like, oh, now you're saying if only I had that power to protect, and I'm like thinking of all the backstory and the sad shit. I'm like, god damn it. Then I remember, no, you killed Yukime's mom, then gaslit her. No, I'm not the believing that. How we saw it don't end. cry to me. No, don't do Yukime it. Yukime would find closure in the fact that everything was over, and the walls she'd once put up to protect herself were now crumbling down in the arms of her hero. 
she would then leave to let Shadow do one last job, but unlike- Okay, here though, she does know that John Smith is Shadow, right? She completely understands this, right? This, this is probably a dumb question, but I'm just wondering if Shadow somehow was able to convince Yukimi that John Smith was a different disguise, but no, she should- Because I'm just thinking about the future because now, you know, Mitsugo is your technically Shadow Garden and, you know, uh, the, the Snow Fox is, you know, they're, they're alliance now. So it, it's not like she's going to think that Shadow is a different entity, right? They, she is aware, right? Okay, good. She would then leave to let Shadow do one last job, but unlike how we know it was to dig up the money, she believed it was to bury Getin. If there was anything- <laughs> What the fuck? After, after all of that, this, this is the manga, by the way. This is the manga meaning- well, technically, he has his foot on his, on his stomach right now. But after all the torturing, you know, slice by slice, just beating his face in. <laughs> he's like holding his hand while he's on his death door. He's technically, he still has his foot on top of him, so it looks disrespectful. But it's funny to me that he's just like showing some kind of like compassion and respect after doing all that. That she picked up from her last encounter with him, it was perhaps that he was just looking for somewhere to die. There was this peaceful expression on his face that made it seem that way. Now, if you're wondering what was in Getin's letter, the core parts were an apology and the usual complaints about his weaknesses, then Aww. the final part was a mention of how the cult was behind everything. This wasn't an organization that Yukime was familiar with, but when faced with an offer to work with those who were fighting against them, mm. Yukime was happy to provide her services. Didn't know the letter kind of played into that, but that is really cool that we have an alliance here. Because the thing I... Because, like, Yukimi's design we saw, it was fucking amazing in the Lawless City arc. But then as soon as that was over, it's like, that's it? We're never going to see Yukimi again? And I was so sad. And then I saw what happens. What happens is John Smith arc, she gets back. I'm like, oh, shit, let's go. But then after this, I'm like, oh, no, I like Yukimi. Is she just done now? But it's like, no, there's not lions with Shadow Garden. So now there's, like, future implications of, like, different arcs that she can show up on. But, yeah. That's pretty much everything from the finale to this question. This scene was actually very wholesome, too. Delta coming back, you know, she's feeling like a guilty dog. She doesn't even know what she did wrong. She's just feeling guilty. That was a very wholesome scene, too. The crisis arc. The next episode is filler, so until we get something... Did you guys know that this is called the credit cr crisis arc? Finale to this credit crisis Does anybody call this the credit crisis arc? Maybe officially it's called that, but I think everybody just called it John Smith arc, right? The next episode is filler, so until we get something a bit more canon... I'll actually be doing a solo leveling video and possibly a first oh? one. Oh, oh, oh! If you want to see those or just some more cut content, then feel free to subscribe to get. Yo, those. yo, yo, yo! We, we might have to. I oh fuck! It's is it is it gonna spoil? Me? Okay, go like his videos, guys. Go something to about solo leveling and free. Oh shit! We might watch this. We can't, if he ever releases it, that'd be pretty cool. But John Smith arc still, I think it was a fantastic arc. I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but it's always fun to see different sides of Shadow. And moving forward, what are we going to do? We got the Rose Kingdom. Sorry, the Oriana Kingdom with, um, I think, Victoria, whatever her name is, right? 